Hey guys, this is Joe Wilson from Marmoset, and I'm going to quickly demo some of the new features in Toolbag 204. First off, we've updated the camera system to really extend the features and make it a lot more flexible. Uh, one of the big changes is the free look camera controls, which give you more of a first person shooter style view. We've also uh, mapped field of view to the mouse wheel so that you can quickly make perspective changes. We've also added WASD style movement control shortcuts to make it a lot easier to reposition the camera, especially in more complex environments like this. The movement and pan speed for the cameras can also be set on a per object basis as well in the camera properties. The camera is now a standard object in the world as well. So you can move it around and uh, rotate it and make adjustments similar to how you would with meshes and lights, even when you have uh, a different camera active. We've revamped the Skylight preset workflow, including replacing the presets drop down with a shiny new Sky Browser. This gives you a quick preview of all the presets in your Sky folder and should make it easy to pick out the appropriate Sky for your scene. We've also added the ability to load in sky content from different directories if you happen to have a, a different set of skies. Recently I had the opportunity to travel to northern Italy and naturally I took along my tripod and camera and captured a bunch of high resolution HDR panoramas. And here are a few skies from that set. We plan on releasing the sky pack as a, a separate add-on for tool bag and sky shop. Be sure to check out our website for more information about the northern Italy sky pack. In addition to the new Sky Browser, we've also added a variety of new background display modes like Color, Blurred Sky, and Ambient Sky. Uh, my favorite of which is Blurred Sky, which allows you to control the amount of background blur. This is great as a replacement for the depth of field or to work in addition to the depth of field effect. And um, unlike depth of field, it does not have any problems dealing with materials that have additive blending. Another feature that we're really excited about is the Vertex Color Support and the ability to load polypaint data in from OBJ exported directly out of ZBrush. Here we've got a really dense sculpt from ZBrush. It's about 4 million triangles or so. You can see just how dense the geometry is. Now to get the polypaint data to display here, all we need to do is change the albedo module from albedo map to vertex color. And that should show up immediately. You generally want to also check the sRGB box if you are importing polypaint data. Vertex color information can also be used as ambient occlusion data by selecting the correct vertex color channel in the drop down here in the occlusion map slot. Now I'll just drag on the rest of these materials that I set up previously and we're done. So that does it for the major features in the 204 update. We've also added a number of other small features such as uh, mesh highlighting, copy and paste into text boxes, some improvements with uh, local reflection artifacts, um, and a variety of bug fixes. This has been Joe Wilson for Marmoset. Make sure to check out marmoset.co for more information about Toolbag and SkyShop as well as tutorials and other cool stuff.